Hi everyone, and welcome back to English for You. I'm Pat. I'm Kathy. Today we're carrying on with our article about the June Rebellion in France. It was around 40 years after the French Revolution, but since that time things had been messy in France. Yes, the original revolution in 1789 helped the people for a while. But the French royal family came back.、Mm. Some of the kings were liberal, but the ordinary people were still poor and hungry. So the people fought against the government and the army. Now, one reason why this moment in history has become famous is that it inspired the events of the book, show, and then movie Les Misérables. In today's article, we'll find out more about the events of the June Rebellion and how the writer of Les Misérables was caught up in it. Yeah, he got right in the middle of this、mm. thing, as we will see. Okay, let's read through the article and check it out. Reading. The Angry Men of the June Rebellion. On June fifth, eighteen thirty-two, the June Rebellion began not with a song but with a funeral. A widely loved military leader, General Jean Maximilien Lamarck, had just passed away. In France's troubled recent decades, he had been a friend to workers and the poor. For this reason. People wanted to use his death as a time to protest. As Lamarck's coffin traveled through the French capital, the funeral march turned into a protest. Things quickly turned violent, and the fighting spread across the city. Elsewhere in Paris, a writer named Victor Hugo heard guns being fired and rushed to see what was happening. He ended up trapped behind the rebel defenses and barely escaped with his life. This experience is what would later inspire his story, Les Misérables. For the rebels, things didn't end so well. Within 24 hours, they retreated to a single neighborhood, where they were all either killed or captured by the army. Many people believe that their uprising failed because ordinary people were too frightened to help them. Maybe if these people hadn't been so scared, the June Rebellion and Victor Hugo's book might have ended very differently. So, day two of the article begins by saying, on June fifth, eighteen thirty-two, the June Rebellion began. Not with a song, but with a funeral.、Mm. Now, a funeral is an event that celebrates the life of someone who has recently died. It's when friends and family get together just before that person is buried or burned. So it's often a very sad moment,、mm -hmm. but sometimes it can be used to celebrate and remember that person. Kind of get the family together to share their kind of sad feelings and so on. So,、uh, but yeah, it's basically the ceremony after someone dies. Here's a, an example sentence: The old woman had many close friends and family members, so her funeral was a large event. Funeral 就是葬礼哦。那去参加丧礼叫做 to attend a funeral。这个字有另外一个意思，指的是麻烦的事或倒霉的事。例如 ，If you are caught by bullying his brother, that's your funeral. 如果你被撞见欺负他弟弟的话，那你可要倒霉了。So whose funeral was it? Well, let's read on. The article says a widely loved military leader, General Jean Maximilien Lamarck,、mm. had just passed away.、Uh, the phrasal verb "pass away" means to die. Next, the article says, in France's troubled recent decades, he had been a friend to workers and the poor. That's right.、Uh, France had had bad times. A decade is ten years. There were several bad、mm -hmm. decades, but General Lamarck had always tried to kind of keep things going. He, I think, he was still alive. You know, he was a young man during the first revolution, so he wanted to sort of keep the beliefs of that time alive.、Mm -hmm. And the article continues for this reason. People wanted to use his death as a time to protest. Of course, you know, oh, he's gone. This guy who's been representing us, so we're afraid that things will get worse now. So now is the time to act. 
and they protest.、Mm -hmm. If you are protesting or protesting against something, both pronunciations are okay.、Mm -hmm. You are publicly saying that you are unhappy with it.、Mm -hmm. You want something to be done to change it.、Mm -hmm. Protests often involve a lot of people getting together in a place, walking together, or standing together with signs and things like that. However, one person could protest by themselves. Look at Greta Thunberg and her one-person strike against climate change. So the word protest is both a noun and a verb. We're using it as a verb in this sentence in the article. The action of doing this, as a noun, a protest can be an individual action or a large event with many people. Here's an example of protest as a verb: a crowd of people gathered outside the government building to protest against the new law. 这里我们要来看 protest 抗议这个单词，可以当动词使用，例如。Crowds of pacifists protested against the war. 成群的和平主义者呢抗议这场战争，或者也可以当名词用。例如 ，the de、uh, demonstration was a protest against the rise in tuition and fees. 此次的示威呢是抗议学费呢上涨。而提出抗议的英文，你可以说 to make a protest or to register a protest， 提出抗议。So what happened next? Well, we see in the article、mm -hmm. that as Lamarck's coffin traveled through the French capital, that's Paris, of course,、mm -hmm. the funeral march turned into a protest.、Mm -hmm. And there, of course, we're using protest as a noun. We also saw the word coffin, which is the box made of wood or metal or something else that a body is placed in during a funeral, and which is then burned or buried along with the dead person. Coffin 就是棺材。这里有一个和 coffin 有关的片语，大家可以记起来使用。The final nail in the coffin. 这里的 nail 是铁钉 ，coffin 就是棺材，所以 the nail， 呃、uh, ，the final nail in the coffin， 字面上的意思就是最后的棺材钉。棺材钉上面最后一根钉子就等于宣告大势已去，无可无可挽回了，引申为最后致命的一击的意思。For example， this argument was the final nail in the coffin of their marriage. Back to our article, we also see a funeral march taking place. That's right. The word march can be a noun or a verb, and here we're using it as a noun. To march, the verb means to walk from one place to another in a quick, measured, and regular、uh, pace.、Mm -hmm. Soldiers march,、yes. and that's what we mainly think of. As a noun. A march is the event of a group of people walking from one place to another. Again, at this fairly quick, regular pace. A funeral march is when people walk with or behind the coffin, often from the church where the ceremony was held to the place where the coffin will be buried. So here's another example of march. This time using soldiers. During the march, the soldiers were only allowed to take short rests. March 有三月的意思，这里是指游行。那这个字呢，也可以当动词及名词使用。文章这里用的是名词 March， 它也有进展、进行的意思。这个时候呢，你呃后面可以加上 of。例如 ，His book describes the march of the civilization of a primitive society。他的著作描述一个原始的社会的开化的过程。And like many protests, this got A、uh, one got messy. Yeah, good use of yesterday's word messy. So the article says things quickly turned violent, and the fighting spread across the city. To spread across somewhere means to start in one place, but then expand to include a larger area. Like the COVID nineteen virus spreading across the world. Indeed, I hope this virus can stop spreading across the world and return our normal lives back to us. Spread across something 就是蔓延。文章这里说到，暴力及战争很快的在城市当中蔓延。So now we're going to connect this real history to the book and the show Les Misérables. We see that. Elsewhere in Paris, a writer named Victor Hugo heard guns being fired and rushed to see what was happening. 
So the word elsewhere is used to mean in a different place. We don't have to be exact about exactly where the place is. We just mean somewhere else that isn't the place we were talking about first.、Mm -hmm. Elsewhere 就是在别处。Uh, 就是 in a different place, 不确定地点在哪里 We also see that he ended up trapped behind the rebel defenses and barely escaped with his life. Yeah, here defenses means strong positions that people hide behind during a fight、mm -hmm. to protect themselves and their kind of area that they own. Here in Paris during this rebellion, they built the rebels. They built large walls、mm -hmm. of furniture and carts, barrels, stones, and all kinds of things, and they blocked off streets so that groups of them could resist the French soldiers. Defense 就是防御施工。造个句子哦。The defenses of the city must be strengthened. 这个城市的防御施工呢，必须加强。而当呃，如果当做防御措施的意思使用的时候。后面你可以加上 against， 例如 the shooting was in pure self-defense. 开枪呢，它纯粹是为了自保。Next, the article says this experience is what would later inspire his story, Les Misérables. To inspire means to give a person both an idea and the motivation to carry that idea out to do something with it. With writers, we get inspired. We get, or inspiration is the noun. It's like an idea that catches fire in our brains, and we immediately have to write that idea down or write about it. Sometimes it can be an idea that plants itself in our brains like a seed, growing until we're ready to write that story. We could also use the word inspire to mean get people to do all kinds of things: study hard, learn about a subject, take up a new hobby, or inspire them to try to change the world. Here's an example sentence related to writing: A painting he saw in the art museum inspired the writer with an idea for a short story. Here, the inspire is to encourage, to encourage. His encouraging remarks inspired confidence in me. 这个字也有赋予灵感的意思 For example, his best music was inspired by the memory of his mother. Okay, so Victor Hugo ended up writing Les Misérables, one of the world's most famous books. So things went well for him. The article says, for the rebels, things didn't end so well. We see that in the article. Within 24 hours, they retreated to a single neighborhood, where they were all either killed or captured by the army. To retreat means to go backward,、mm -hmm. generally to a place of safety. We often use this word to talk about armies or soldiers who have lost a battle and need to go back closer to their own country or their own safe places. Retreat 就是撤退 to retreat to a safe distance. But if you lose the battle, you can say it was an undignified retreat. 不光彩呃不光彩的撤退哦 However, not all of them could retreat, though. Right. We see that some of the rebels were killed,、mm. and the rest were captured. To capture someone means to make them a prisoner and hold them in some kind of jail or prison. Captured people can't get away. Now, often in battles, more people are captured. Than killed because they think it's more sensible to give up rather than die. Here's an example sentence: The soldiers captured a group of their enemies while they were sleeping. Capture 这个动词意思是捕获、俘虏。那除了这个意思呢，也可以用来形容吸引某人的注意。Capture the imagination of somebody. Imagination 是想象力，在这里有 interest。注意或是兴趣的意思，因此 capture imagination of somebody 或者是 capture somebody's imagination 就是表示使某人感兴趣，吸引某人，也可以说 capture one's attention. Back to our article. So why didn't the rebellion succeed like the French Revolution? Well, we see in the article that many people believe that their uprising failed because ordinary people were too frightened to help them.、Mm. So, yeah, there were a lot of fighters, but a lot、yes. of people just stayed home. 
An uprising is another word for a rebellion. So it's the people rise up, like off their knees or their faces, and stand up to their rulers. Uprising 就是起义。你可以拆开来记 ，up 向上 ，rise 升起，就是反抗某人、某事物的起义的意思。你可以说呢 ，an uprising against somebody or something. And we also saw the word frightened in that sentence. This adjective means scared or afraid.、Mm. You're worried about the results of something, and you don't、mm. want to act because of this fear. For example, many people were feeling frightened during the COVID nineteen crisis. Yeah, and a lot of people are still in panic and are frightened by the COVID nineteen virus. Frightened 就是受惊的、害怕的。The final sentence of our article says, "Maybe if these people hadn't been so scared, the June Rebellion and Victor Hugo's book might have ended very differently." So, in that sentence, we've used what we call a third conditional, and this is a grammar structure that's used to talk about a hypothetical or imaginary situation in the past. And the result in the past of this change. So we might be saying how the past could have changed if something else had happened in a different way. Now, for this grammar pattern, we have an if clause and a result clause. The if clause uses a verb in the past perfect, had plus pp. In our article, hadn't been. The result clause uses have, might, could, or would. Plus a present perfect tense verb have plus pp. Our article is might have ended. Here's another example of this kind of conditional. If I hadn't started working at that school, I wouldn't have met the woman I married. So really, what happened? I did start working there. I did marry her, but things could have been different if I hadn't started working. 这里我们来看这个句子。If these people hadn't been so scared, 这个句型表示与过去事实相反的假设语气。If 所引导的这个呃条件子句当中呢，动词时态用过去完成式，那主要子句则用过去式形态助动词加上 have。pp。那文章最后说到，如果这些人没有那么害怕。或许六月起义和维克多·雨果的书会有不同的结局。Yep, there are a lot of times in history we could talk about things like, oh, if this had happened, that you know that would have happened, or this could have happened, everything would have been different. But we can't really guess about that sort of thing because who knows how history would have turned out. But anyway, that brings us to the end of today's article. So let's go to our for you chat question. Chat. So our question is related to what the people were doing in the article. How do you feel about marches and protests? Are they an effective way of making change? Are they dangerous? Explain your answer. Well, I consider marches and protests pretty dangerous if people get. Out of control,、yep. and especially if they have weapons in their hands, right? You can visualize the consequences. So, because of this, I don't think it's an effective way of making change.、Mm, yeah, I would say it. It's difficult to change a government's mind.、Mm -hmm. I mean, people can vote to、yes. change a government.、Certainly. That is a more direct way of doing it. But a protest, some kind of action, can help to. I think more than making a change, it spreads awareness of a problem. It kind、mm. of highlights that problem, that then would cause people to hopefully take、mm -hmm. action.、Um, can they be dangerous? Yes,、mm -hmm. depends on the government in question. Tiananmen Square,、oh, for example.、Yeah. You know, we、yes. know what China did, although China pretends it doesn't.、Mm -hmm. um, there are other occasions in sort of, I think Mexico. There was a really bad one. A lot of people、mm -hmm. got killed when helicopters and shooters、mm -hmm. started firing at the crowd. Something like that.、Um, in the UK, the protests these days are not quite so violent.、Mm -hmm. um, a lot of countries know how well to keep things under control. Uh, and you've had people like Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr.、Oh, yes. saying. 
peaceful protest, non-violent action. And of course, if the people are protesting in, uh, in a non-violent way, mm -hmm. there's no reason for, or hopefully no reason mm. for the police to get angry. So whether it makes change, maybe, maybe not, not directly. I don't think a government has said, oh, you protested, we're going to change our minds. Mm. Less possible, but people protest, okay, there's a problem, maybe mm. this becomes a wider discussion, and due to the democratic process, mm. then something does end up changing. Mm. Who knows? It probably all depends on the circumstances. I once protested against tuition fees oh. in the UK about mm. 23 years ago. Wow. Didn't change a thing. We still have tuition fees. Mm. So obviously my protest didn't particularly work, even though I had a really cool sign. Okay, but that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. Do check out the show or the book, Les Miserables, mm -hmm. at some point. It's really good. Watch the film as well. Um, and that's us. So for English for You, I'm Pat. I'm Kathy. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. The Angry Men of the June Rebellion On June 5th, 1832, the June Rebellion began not with a song, but with a funeral. A widely loved military leader, General Jean-Maximilien Lamarck, had just passed away. In France's troubled recent decades, he had been a friend to workers and the poor. For this reason, people wanted to use his death as a time to protest. As Lamarck's coffin traveled through the French capital, the funeral march turned into a protest. Things quickly turned violent, and the fighting spread across the city. Elsewhere in Paris, a writer named Victor Hugo heard guns being fired and rushed to see what was happening. He ended up trapped behind the rebel defenses and barely escaped with his life. This experience is what would later inspire his story Les Miserables. For the rebels, things didn't end so well. Within 24 hours, they retreated to a single neighborhood where they were all either killed or captured by the army. Many people believe that their uprising failed because ordinary people were too frightened to help them. Maybe if these people hadn't been so scared, the June Rebellion and Victor Hugo's book might have ended very differently. Vocabulary Review Protest A group of 2,000 people gathered outside the city hall to protest the new tax law. Funeral Robert passed away on April 20th, and his funeral was held a few days later. March On the day of the festival, people watched as a march of musicians and dancers moved through the city's streets. Inspire A walk in the English countryside inspired the poet to write a poem about nature. Capture Thomas tried to escape from the guards, but he was captured and taken back to the prison. Frightened Helen is frightened of the dark and almost never sleeps with the light off. Coffin Elsewhere Defense Retreat Uprising Yishan 如欲索取视听教材，请来电零二二三六四四零零零，零二二三六四四零零零，或上网查询，网址是 triple w dot 
English 四 u dot net triple w dot English 四 u dot net。